everyone, it's so nice to have you here. We're starting off the vlog sorting through some of my old paintings. All of these were painted during my university days. I studied architecture but always turned to illustration as a way to distress and feel creative. Back then, I used mostly Copic markers until I discovered using watercolors. I can definitely see my growth as I revisit these old pieces, but I do still like some of them. I think one major improvement is how I handle layering, blending, and avoiding muddy colors now. And in part, I think this is due to upgrading my watercolor paper and using artist grade pigments. I'm mostly a traditional media artist, so I'm challenging myself to do a few illustrations completely on the iPad using Procreate. As I practice more and more with digital illustration, I find myself gaining confidence and control to achieve the kind of textures that I would want if I were to create the artwork traditionally. I start with extremely rough sketches just to experiment with the possible poses and then I turn down the opacity and draw a more refined version on a new layer. Sometimes I want to manipulate my sketch and so the big advantage of working digitally is that I can choose to only tweak certain parts using the free transform or distort tool. I often color the base color beyond the outline because I want the textures to naturally extend to the edges. I then go back in with an eraser to clean up. to head to a different city and visit one of my favorite places, besides art supply stores of course. I love antiques so much because every object holds a unique story. The craftsmanship and history of the past is really intriguing to me. I enjoy looking at old illustration styles and getting inspired by the retro color schemes too. This is a vintage child's brush. It's so cute, isn't it? I couldn't resist. My friend encouraged me. to work on another digital illustration. This time it's a book cover for Hansel and Gretel. My rough sketch and color test is on the left. I wanted the title text to really pop and the overall composition to have more white space, 
so I chose to define the gingerbread house using negative space. I would love to talk more about my digital illustration process in future videos, so please share with me any questions or things you might be interested in. These are some of the items I got at that Japanese home goods store. I've been wanting a smaller painting bucket and so that find was perfect. I got my glasses 3D printed in the last vlog and now I'm painting it my signature red. I'm going to use some air dry clay to sculpt. It helps to add a bit of water to re-moisturize the clay. I also use a wet brush to smooth out the seams. When joining parts, I scratch up the surface of the object and add a bit of water for better adhesion. that scissors were also great in achieving sharp details. I'm using acrylic wash to paint the figures. I'm 
sketching in pencil first and then filling in the features. Now for the most fun part, it really does look edible, doesn't it? No, it's not a real jelly bean. I think they look pretty cute, what do you think? The straw is actually the plastic tube that protects the tips of paintbrushes. Thanks so much for still sticking around. I was wondering how you came across my video. Maybe you came from Instagram or did you find me on YouTube? I think the Instagram algorithm is really difficult for visual artists to thrive because art creation takes so much time. I wish the algorithm encouraged quality over quantity instead. So far, it seems like the longevity of content on YouTube is longer and there is more chance for new interactions. I'm really happy to share my creative journey with you, so lots more to come. I went to the pottery studio with my two friends. You might remember in my last vlog, I painted a tile and a shark. It was so much fun that we decided to come here again. This time, I'm painting on a plate. It would be such a dream to have an entire kitchen full of my own original dishes. Everything would be in cheerful colors and full of smiling characters. To commemorate the artsy day, all three of us drew ourselves painting. It was so silly and fun. I loved it. All the objects are pre-made at this studio, but I plan to try building my own or even throwing on the pottery wheel in the future. about a week and a half to fire, so stay tuned for the results in the next studio vlog. Okay, now for the painting portion of the video. I pulled up my reference photo on my iPad to start. I know some of you have been interested in my pencil sketching process, and I'm using a regular HB pencil by Mitsubishi. Not super precise at this step, mostly just blocking in shapes and deciding where I want to place the characters. The paper I'm using is Arches 300 GSM Hot Press Cotton Paper. The perspective for this particular illustration is quite straightforward, but for other illustrations with a more dynamic perspective, I would really try to spend more time in this pencil sketching phase just to make sure that the perspective is right. I'm 
using a burnt umber colored pencil to outline and erasing that with a kneaded eraser which gently removes the pencil lines only. The colored pencil lines manage to stay intact. I'm using a Mitsubishi brand of colored pencil and the lead is pretty stiff. I'm trying out this Mato Marukun rubber eraser I got from the art hall. Maybe it's my new favorite because it's super soft and the eraser shavings clump up with minimal mess. Using a wet on wet technique and defining the dark and mid tones of the window first, and then going back in with a clean brush with just water to blend the remaining parts. I find that breaking up the areas of colors like that gives me more control while still allowing blendability. For the canopy, I'm painting the ends of the stripes first and then using clear water to blend the middle highlight to create a more 3D effect. This is a toy store I came across in Ginza, Tokyo. It must be quite old, but I was drawn to the colorful clutter of toys scattered about in old cardboard boxes. There is a simple charm to it, and I really feel a human presence and sincere dedication in these sorts of family-run shops. Two watercolor brands that I use the most are Holbein and Daniel Smith. For the most part, I'm using a size 4 round silver black velvet watercolor brush. If you're interested in what other art supplies I use, I'll link to my favorite art supplies video. A tip for painting dark backgrounds or shadows is to not just use a flat black. Instead, go for a mix of colors to give subtle depth. I like to use brown mixed with blues. I go back in with layered shapes of other colors adding to a richness and depth. Finally, I touch up the outlines a little bit and we are done. I really hope you enjoyed this longer vlog and I look forward to sharing more. I'll see you next time.